Hello, in this video tutorial we're going to be covering the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP. In this overview we're going to be talking a little bit about the process of Dora, installing the Windows DHCP service, and we'll be taking a DHCP packet capture. Okay, to learn about DHCP all we really need is a DHCP server service and a DHCP client. In this tutorial we're going to be using a Windows 2008 R2 64-bit DHCP server. DHCP can run on other operating systems such as Linux and even on your network devices including internet routers. Let's go ahead and start by installing the DHCP server service on this Windows 2008 R2 server. So I'll go to Start, Administrative Tools, Server Manager. I'll need to add the DHCP role. Click on Add Roles, choose DHCP Server, hit Next. Next. Choose the interface that DHCP will be listening on. In this case, the server has three interfaces. I'll be listening on the 192.168.100.254 interface. Next. Let's go ahead and give it a parent domain which will become part of the server options and let's provide a global DNS server that we'll be using for all of our scopes. Click Next. We're not going to be using WINS on this network. Click Next. We'll add the DHCP scopes at a later time. We're not going to be covering DHCP version 6 in this tutorial so go ahead and disable that. Click Next. You can review your settings and click install when you're ready. Once the installation has been completed you can review the information, click close. DHCP is now installed on our server. I'll go ahead and close Server Manager and open up Administrative Tools and launch the DHCP server service. Now this DHCP server is in a workgroup environment, but if this server was a member of a domain, you'd have to authorize the DHCP server service before proceeding. Okay, so go ahead and expand next to the server object. Expand IPv version 4 and let's go ahead and create our first scope. A DHCP scope is required for you to set the configuration parameters that you'll be assigning to your DHCP clients. Click Next. We'll give it Scope 1 or you can use any other name you like. Next. I'm going to be assigning DHCP addresses in the 100 subnet from range 100 through 150. The subnet mask I'll be using is a 24-bit mask so I'll click Next. We're not going to have any exclusions during this tutorial so I'll go ahead and click Next. An 8-day lease is OK for this tutorial. Click Next. And I'll configure the rest of the options later. And let's finish. Our scope is created, but it's currently deactivated. Let's go ahead and configure some scope options. Expand the scope. Go to Scope Options. Right now we only have the server options, which is the DNS server and the domain name. These are the global server options we added during the installation, but we can add some specific scope options this time. Right-click Configure Options. Let's go ahead and hit the default gateway, which is 003 router. And I'll assign the 192.168.100.254 to our clients. Click OK. As you can see, we now have three different parameters that we're going to be configuring on our DHCP clients. Next step is to go ahead and activate the scope by right-clicking Activate. The scope is ready to go. The next thing we should talk about is what actually happens during the DHCP process. This process is known as DORA. The reason it's called DORA is because of the four packets that occur during the process. DHCP Discover, DHCP Offer, DHCP Request, and DHCP Acknowledgement. The process starts when a workstation connects to a network and needs to configure its IP settings. It will go ahead and send out a broadcast packet called the DHCP Discover packet. The DHCP server receives the packet and sends an offer if it can from its address pool. The client will then receive that offer request and respond to the DHCP server by sending a DHCP request packet. If the server can complete the fulfillment of this request, it will send back an acknowledgement packet and the client will go ahead and initiate the IP on its network interface card. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the DHCP process. I have a Windows 2003 server with the DHCP role installed. We're going to go ahead and take a packet capture while the DHCP process is occurring. Let's go ahead and start our capture. Okay, from the client's command prompt, I'm going to go ahead and issue the command ipconfig renew so we can start the DHCP process. Okay, as you can see, the client has been assigned the address 192.168.100.1. Let's go ahead and take a look at the packet capture. So here are the results from the packet capture. As you can see, there's four packets. The Discover, Offer, Request, and Acknowledgement. We can take a look at each packet in a little bit more detail. If we expand the DHCP section of this packet, we can see the payload details. This is where the client has no IP address and it's requesting an IP address from a DHCP server. The second packet is the server responding back to the client. In this case, the server has offered the IP address of 182.168.100.1. The third packet, the client is requesting to use the IP address that's been offered to the client. 192.168.100.1. The last packet is the server sending back an acknowledgement to the client, indicating that it should use the 192.168.100.1 address 
and its lease is for eight days. It's assigned it a subnet mask of 255.255.0, a domain name, its default gateway, and a DNS name server. With these four packets, we complete the DHCP process with the information you received from the DHCP server. Well, that completes this tutorial of the DHCP process. Thank you for watching.